Hey folks, so I had some um, some stuff I put together that I wanted to share on a vein of research I ended up down after this summer and then through the holidays I got so behind with all that I have to share. Um, anyhow, so it all started kind of with uh, researching this vein of when we went from um, more matriarchal culture to patriarchal culture. It kind of led down a rabbit hole, basically, you know, because everything comes up when you go down that rabbit hole it ends uh including where exactly we are in the calendar i mean not that it's kind of arbitrary because it's only pertinent to us as people anyways but in a sense it's not arbitrary because it was taken over at a really specific time and from then on it's like we've been on somebody else's time so we don't know where we would have been at with whatever happened when it switched over okay so uh, it creates kind of an, an interesting thing. It led down this rabbit hole of looking at and researching what's called the mud flood, which is um, this natural disaster that seems to have popped up all over the world um, during the, the 1800s or something, right? Um, it seems almost like, like when you start looking into it, like the natural disasters were... Um, triggered somehow almost like using natural disasters for warfare like you hear what they talk about what people could do nowadays there's patents for the equipment and stuff right so um yeah it sounds like th they triggered these mud floods all over the world as a means of uh, uh weather warfare basically right and uh and um where was i going with that so so it's the mud flood and who was at war was the patriarchal versus the matriarchal so it's like when i first started researching you know um patriarchal versus matriarchal cultures and how they kind of took over after a while i ended up uh taking over people's cosmology and spiritual beliefs and other things you know pretty much usurping everything right um so uh it's it's like it might not have happened as long ago as we thought is kind of what's been been being looked into here yeah that the, the victors here of course you know the winners always write history and i don't even like the word history anymore i'm going to start referring to it as the past okay because his story is his story instead of her story which is when the timeline got took over so anyways so um so yeah they they uh, basically took over had these natural disasters and it's kind of funny because to this day the international banksters use natural disasters to financially own places okay so anyways so they moved in and uh moved into these cities all over the world that seem to be based around free energy and um like energy healing and such like the, the ancient churches with these ginormous ornate organs just ridiculous right they're sending out tones you know healing tones for the congregation people went to church every sunday to get healed um so anyways they move into this stuff and don't know how to use any of it and there's no sanitation and that's what began the dark ages and okay so so anyways i've been down this rabbit hole and start researching this and i kind of put together a vein that i picked up through all the timelines um i've brought I'll read from my notebook here now. I've brought it together. Three different avenues, one big picture, starting with Sumeria, with Anki and Enlil, uh, made man for slave labor. Uh, of course, they had to use the earth DNA and their DNA, so they made us in their image, basically. And the first version didn't have free will at all, and it just didn't work out right, for whatever reason, I guess, you know. Um... So they made us with more of their DNA, and unfortunately, they were aware that eventually we would wake up to being aware that we were like them. So um, the idea here was that with that Enlil and Enki's son Marduk, they both had their own agendas and would have rather not had us wake up to our awareness that we are related to the beings that created us, so we have some of the abilities that they have. Okay, um, latent in our DNA, you know. So, uh, what I wrote, and Lil and Marduk wanted to keep humanity enslaved and dumb, 
have been controlling things here. You know, they've pretty much been running the show. They're the patriarchy, okay? So, and Enki gives us free will, wants us to be what we can. You know, he wants us to wake up to what we really are because he knows that's what's right, you know? What they did was basically against the laws of creation, kind of, you know? So anyways, fast forward to the 1800s. Tartaria erased from history, new world built on top of old one, with Rothschild money by children from foundling homes shipped everywhere by train to repopulate and rebuild. There's this weird thing that people touch on during the 1800s. And, you know, you could say that there might be something to it, you know, with... Um, and it's funny because I just think it plays into it, really, if you think of religious shame and illegitimate babies outside of marriage, right? But um, it, the timing and the amount of children is insane when you look at the numbers. All over the world in the 1800s, these quote-unquote foundling homes, thousands of babies shipped by train to different towns. And it's like, what is even going on, you know? And then you see all the pictures from then, from when they first started getting photography, and there's nobody in all the major cities. And the building that they were doing is just beyond what we could even imagine. You don't know the purpose of it. So anyways, so, yeah, basically, all right, and so then you fast forward to present time. Eugenics continues with tons of soft kill population control methods. Humanity numbered through, uh, humanity numbed through drugs and sex. Still slave labor just in a gilded cage. Gilded to attempt us to, to attempt to prevent us from waking up. So, that's my little, so far, bits that I um, researched on Tartaria and kind of feel like that's a, a pretty good broad view picture of what's gone on so far. It's interesting because you think there's not a lot to it, but I mean, it's in the, the uh, encyclopedias from the 1800s, it's in the... Uh, collections of world flags from the 1800s and then there's even weirder stuff like I was um re-watching the series Avatar the Airbender the other day the episode about Wan Shi Tong's library and it looks like the architecture that they claim for Tartaria it's buried in mud except for an antenna that sticks out the antenna because they the architecture looks like it's meant to collect free energy basically um and made with the right materials to do so you know their flag is a giant owl, or it is an owl, and <laughs> a giant owl lives in the library on the episode, and oh, it's ridiculous, there's more to it than that. They come there seeking information to learn how to win a war, and he's all peaceful, so he figures it out and gets mad and buries the library even further. Um, the fact that when they're in the library, they they uh, figure out when the next solar eclipse is. It's part of the story, but they're looking for the next solar eclipse, and they go into this um, planetarium that's just like a clock, and they just keep turning the dial until they get to the next one. Um, it's pretty familiar because it's like, regardless of what the true cosmology is, that's how we can use the appearance of our planet from here to get ourselves around being the size that we are. So it really doesn't matter, it behaves in a certain way, and that's like what everything's based off of, really, that we use. It's not based off of, yeah, anyways, that's a whole different ball of wax, but have a good night, folks.